Now, if you've never seen inside Butcher Factory, we'll go with that. Then I'm about to give you an insight, so share the post now. Um, this is behind the scenes, Country Valley Foods, one of the top um, butcher suppliers in the area, one of the meat suppliers. Now, if you've never seen inside, um, what do you, you call this, a butcher's factory or butcher factory? We'll go with that. Then I'm about to give you an insight, so share the post now. Um, this is behind the scenes, Country Valley Foods, one of the top um, butcher suppliers in the area, one of the meat suppliers. And it turns out that Country Valley Foods actually supplied that unbelievable tomahawk steak that I had in Sambuca windmill just off the A19 which is why I'm here now, because that steak was so good. So let's take a little look inside. You've got the butchery manager, just about to come over in a second, um, and he's gonna show me around the butcher factory. So yeah, take a look at this, can't wait to see it all. Hopefully you like it as much as I do, so share the post now. So this is Chris, the butchery manager. Hello there, yeah. all right? Yeah, good mate. So you're going to show me around, show yeah. me all the bits and bobs, what's going on. Do chicken burgers at the bottom. So chicken burgers. I'm going to show you them first. Oh, I like a bit of chicken, that'll do me. Perfect mate, lead the way. Let's go and check out the chicken burgers. This is the burger, this is the burger line. Burger line, yeah. This is uh, making some chicken burgers for a firm called Quaid Apple Burgers in York. Right. Uh, gluten free chicken burgers, yeah. Gluten free chicken burgers. Gluten free chicken burgers. Alright, Katie. Few of them going on. So when the first one came out, what what was the reason she put it on the scales? Is it to make sure they're all the same? Or? Because there's, there's some settings on the machine, it's just to double check that they're coming out with the, uh, the correct weight. Well, how much are those, Katie? What? Eight, Eight ounce, six, how many? Six, six ounce. ounce. Six ounce. Go on then, James, get up there. So this one's chicken, is that one beef, is it? Oh, I'm guessing you might or you might not know. How many burgers do you produce in a day, do you reckon? That's Katie. <laughs> Cheers. So we're going to put them to the test and find out how many they actually make in a day. One order was a thousand burgers. It's just scary. So today, today this will knock out at least two thousand burgers. Let's go and look at the sausages. Um, you make it spice. You put the you put the seasoning in. You put the the rusk. So in. what what is it that's been minced now? Uh, this is a uh, our resident sausage, which is Riverside. Right. Uh, I won't give you I won't, I won't give you any clues, Mark. Why it's called that? So how much, how much meat would you say as a butcher? How much meat would you say you eat a week? Not that much, because I'm not keeping weight down. No, I, I can't ever. I, have to have, I, I try and have meat in every single meal. I'll try and go for maybe at least two to four steaks a week. Chris, so this route now, what's this called? Carcass chiller. Carcass, Carcass, Carcass intake chiller. And what, what is it that this route does? It basically, uh, an intake of like lambs, pigs, uh, cuts of beef. Lambs, pigs, beef. Yeah. Do you want to show us around? Yeah. So, just to explain to everyone who's going to be watching online, and just so I remember. There's your, there's your cuts of lamb, which that's what we call a lamb saddle. Lamb saddle. But it starts off as a full lamb. We, so they, these are all lamb? On this all section. lambs, we've, uh, we've, we've got a special uh, buyer who buys our own gear and it's right. all, all locally. 
really from uh, Darlington you know, Market. That lamb is probably my favourite meat of them all. I absolutely love lamb. It's quite an intense flavour, isn't it? Yeah. Especially, I've just came back from Istanbul, and a lot of them were using fresh lamb on their kebabs. Absolutely incredible, mate. I'm sure yours is when we try it. The next one is, uh, obviously, pigs. All this pig section. They come, they come in as split pigs. Uh, obviously, puts, puts to order and that put your bits and pieces left. Right, so what have we got here now, Chris? Here you've got uh, loin and ribs. Which, oh, uh, love ribs. <laughs> and the, and the beef, beef ribs. Yeah, beef, oh, yeah, all beef, these beef, but it's loin and ribs, and they fill it in. Uh, they end up in the uh, dry age chiller, and they're in there for at least uh, 28 days so, before we do anything with them. So what's the reason that you dry age them first? It's just the, the flavour. It gives them more an intense uh, flavour. Next section is uh, Forza beef. Beautiful. Which is your, that's your rib again. That's where the rib comes from, goes into the hand, which is outside. Chris, what section are we going to do now? This is the deboning area. This is, this is Ian. Ian, all right, mate. Cheers right, right. for doing this for us. Appreciate right, it. Going. Let's go. So, what what is this? So, a high quarter? That's a high quarter. I'm taking the flank off. You can take it down there. Well, it's not the standing floor. <laughs> take it out there. That's a hang. That's a flank. Now you come around here. Catch the fillet here. Come down here. Beautiful. And fill it out. And you mark it there. Come across here. I'll line off. I can't believe the speed is well enough. So how would you need these speed in the like this? Come down here. We've got by the right. Here, here, here. So so they've like, got speed but the meat is above the main part. It could probably do about uh probably twenty twenty uh nines of water now. That's good. Yeah, 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 Take that bit off. That goes in the bin. It's almost like a butterfly coming in. That's your rump done. So can I just start, so where does the cut-offs, the cut-offs of the meat, does this go into your mince or? Yeah, they go into the mince. They the mince, so it's going to be uh, this. Right. I'll put the dice, nice beef. That's the rump tail, that goes into the dice. This is your sirloin. This is your Is this the normal speed that you'd go up with this as well? You just can't just them. Is that quick? It's actually quicker. Yeah. So how long would you say it takes someone to learn the skills that he's got? If you took on an apprentice here now, day one, how many years would it take to get this level? Yeah. To get to that level. Um, You've got to be a specific grade. Because you're hard work and it's not really pig like hard work nowadays. No, no, these are pig right? 100% agree with that. To be, to be fair, you get the right train and you should do it. I've got about three, four years. And when you do take off butcher, is it something that is like a diet breed or? Yes. You can't get given to do it. 
That's your sirloin. Beautiful sirloin. Oh. 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 Skin down there. And that's just a tear off the bit that you don't really want to be too. Don't like that, just, just wrestle. Turn it over, you got a bit out there. It can make it look so easy. What are you doing with that with this one? Got the shank off. Take it the shit off. Take it that that's the shit man quarter shit. And the high quarter shit. Yeah. Hang quarter shin. Now I'm taking the eyes will bone out. I'm about far off here. That's that's the top of the what he's taking out there. Boom, boom, boom. You just think you can the eyes will the top side, the top side. Now I'm going to take the top side off. Turn that back. What he's on there now is the top side. Top side, top side, top side. Top side is what we do. You look for that seam there. You down that seam. Clean it off. Got a vein down there, stick that out. Got your top side done. Go go away. Get mini snakes. Stop tearing. It's not as tender as the cell on your hook. Right. Slant now. Slant now. Basically, slant. Slant where you could use. Come on, yeah, kick that bit out there. What he's taking out now is what we call a good skirt. Which is the size of your hand. Basically, just for raising it, things like that. But there's a muscle in there. He had that top one there. Huh? Yeah. You go down this bit here. You've got three muscles in there. What he's taking out there. You heard of the Bavet? No, I've never heard of that. The vet. The vet, yeah. What he's taking out there, that was called the Bavet. And you did, you did. You the muscle there. Uh, it's still use that thing, you're going to hit. No, people, people actually, people actually put them in the stick. And the steaks? Right. So, the the so now we move on to tomahawk, which is one of our favourite cuts of meat, uh, which is the ribeye that's still on the bone. Uh, it stops it better on the bone, and you get the little pieces all the way going on the bone where you can hold it like an absolute caveman. There's no need for knives and forks. You pick it up and chew it. 
Take it away, Dave. Nice. No. Normally, they normally weigh average about a kilo. About a kilo each one. About a kilo, yeah. Pleasure this, mate. Absolutely loving it. Thank you. Cheers, mate, for that. Thank no you. No problem. Right. Uh, what would be the difference instead of them doing it? Why would you use this? Because it doesn't speed up. Oh, it's cute. Because it's such a. I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, of course. That'll come out. Like I say, I must do over a thousand on a Monday. Thousand stakes? Yeah. On a Monday. Whatever what stakes you're going to cut, the programme already is. Yeah. So you can see different, different size stakes all the way down. So now we're going to do sirloins, yeah. eight ounce. Right. So yeah. that's number four. Press OK, OK again, then it comes on. That's just ready for the steak to go in. So all you do is you get your steak, wear it until you hear the beat. And you place it on the conveyor belt, try and get it squared up, and just wait for it to go in. What we try and do is try and keep a gap of equal distance. No, I just wear the odd few, no, so like you say, the machine tells you, you've yeah. got to square it up at the front, and then it's going to start cutting all the way down, and the back end we don't use anyway. Right. They'll go, I might, might go into a few mixed grills, but... So this one has now brought us to the dry age area, which they call a maturation chiller. Oh, this is some sizes through, isn't it? So this is all the dry is. Um, all the big products are is a baby beef. All the it's all beef, all beef. Um, what's the longest you would dry age something for? We put it up. Yeah, what's sorry? It was up to 100 days. 100 days. days. It's had to do 28. Yeah, 28 days is the normal amount, yeah. isn't it? But I mean, that's, that's your, that was your summer home that Dave did for you. Dry age tomahawk. That was that, that was before it's prepped. Make the blip and the and again, and that'll get 28 days of heat before it goes out and be prepped. Yeah, and you've got your tea boards. See, I've never been one for a tea board because I think it it's all yeah. sort of waste part yeah. of the meat on one of the sides. Yeah, it's probably a better a better pitching. Tea board. Dry age tea board. Good eyes. So do you see a difference in them as the dry age? Do you see them shrink much or? Yeah, I'm going to show you in a minute. Excellent, mate. Let's go through. These are gloves. So you can see the Yeah, you can see, you can see the colour difference here. So the other ones there coming up with the 28 days, you can see it starts to get darker over here. The longer that they're left in the dry age. Uh, again, giving that more intense flavour. So how long have these been in, would you say? I would say they've been in about two to three weeks. Two to three weeks. I am in absolute beat heaven in here. Slap the grill on. The difference that you would think the inside of butchery would look like to compare to how clean it is, spotless, no blood anywhere, no blood. Um, it's amazing, you know, it's amazing to see. I love the fact that Country Valley Foods have got me down here and let me inside, give a new lot, a new lot, an insight into how 
a proper butchery works. The skills that guy, that guy had out there, Chris was it? Ian, the butcher there, was so skillful. It was amazing to see. And I just hope that younger, younger generations get into butchery because it takes time to get to the level that he's at. Um, so anyone who's watching this wants to get into butchery, go and do it, learn what Ian knows. Yeah, it's been amazing. Thank you very much, lads, appreciate it. The dry year drip, you said you've never had one to 100. I'm off this now, by the way. You've never had one to 100 days. Could we leave something in it? and take it in a hundred days. Yeah, they want to be on for dinner. What do you want to say like that? Ribeye? Ribeye. What, what's the best? What, can what, you tell what, us what's the best? Yeah, like, uh, I could leave a ribbon here yeah. for a hundred days, I'll put the ticket on it, you know, like the... Uh, the yeah, excellent. And it, it, it tells you when it was killed on the, on the ticket. Right. No problem. Yes. Listen, a massive thanks for watching me, Dad Loves Food, on YouTube or over on Facebook or TikTok. But whilst you're here, click that subscribe button, the bell, and subscribe to Dad Loves Food here on YouTube.